Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Fish. Before we get into your questions, quick reminder, Rev's Make Music at Home campaign is in its last couple days, or possibly last day, depending on when this video goes up. I've been slacking it uploads, okay, my bad. But if you missed it, Rev is giving away a D20 or a G20 amp, your choice. Completely free to enter. All you need to do to win is upload a video of yourself playing an original piece of music. Full produced track, or literally, not even joking, 10 second clip, Take it on your phone. Upload it to your preferred social media platform of choice. I recommend Instagram because it'll be the easiest to find you. Make sure you're following me and Rev on said platform. Fill out the form using the link in the description. That's it. Super easy. There's literally no reason not to enter. It's not a competition. It's not a shred off or see who can chug the hardest. With all the craziness going on, we just want to encourage people to pick up, play, and enjoy the guitar. And you can win one of the most, if not the most, kick-ass little 20 watt tube head on the planet. If you need even more motivation, check out my demo. The tone is unreal. It's got built-in two notes torpedo integration. Super awesome of Rev to be giving these away. It's a super cool amp. And if you're stuck at home, you deserve good tone. Seriously, I wanna see what riffs you guys come up with. And now, into your questions. Have you checked out the new Solar Bolt-On necks? No, I haven't. Well, at least not in person. They look sick, but I don't personally know anyone that's managed to try one out IRL yet. Other than like, Ola, obviously. But if you have no idea what's going on here, let's get to the TLDR. I swear, every time I take a look at the Solar website, there's like a ton of new models. Perks of being a small mobile company, they can adapt super quick compared to the large brands. But anyways, the ones in question are the AB and SB series. The first letter designating shape, the B stands for bolt-on. And this is the first time that Solar's done bolt-on necks. Ola says that this is supposed to make them sound snappier as opposed to a set neck. And I usually associate bolt-ons with fenders, and I guess, Fenders do have a snappier sound. I'm not sure if that's all down to the bolt-on neck, but Ola's played enough guitars, I'm willing to take his word on it. And there are a lot of people out there who are aggressively anti-bolt-on for some reason. Maybe because it is the less expensive way of doing things, so it is found on all the starter pack guitars. Like, all the cheapest guitars are bolt-ons, but that doesn't mean that all bolt-ons are starter pack guitars. Regardless, the coolest thing about these guitars is that for the first time, Solar is using roasted maple for the necks and for the fingerboards as well. So the ABs consist of four models, all one series guitars, so those are the ones with stainless steel frets and luminlays. There's one with a hip shot hardtail in trans purple burst matte for $9.99, a Floyd version in natural brown matte for $9.49, an Evertune 6 in antique silver matte for $9.99, and an Evertune 7 in carbon black matte for $10.99. Honestly, an Evertune 7 string with a roasted maple neck for just over a thousand bucks, that's a pretty tasty proposition. The other cool thing about the AB series is that it's got a brand new pickup configuration for Solar. Now, Solar, since they first launched, basically it's been the same Duncan Solar dual humbucker set in every single guitar. It means consistency across the line, just pick your favorite shape and you know what you're getting. The AB series, meanwhile, is a bit of a departure from that formula, which makes sense. So there's still a Duncan Solar in the bridge position, then all the sixes have Duncan Solar dual rails in the neck, while the 7 has a stacked single. I'm guessing the dual rails is based on a cool rails, that's a more common one found in the neck position, but I've actually not tried a hot rails or a cool rails, um, so I could definitely be wrong, but that's my guess. Now I like how even with the differences, the roasted maple bolt-on, the single size neck pickups, these haven't lost their identities. These are still very much Solars, they're not trying to be anything else. And I feel like that strong sense of identity is something that Solar really has over other small brands. You know, looking at these makes me really want a roasted bolt-on version of the Solar Single Cut, like a GCB series, I guess it would be called, but that's almost definitely purely wishful thinking at this point. And actually checking out the Solar website, since your question was asked, there are two other bolt-ons as well. This time the S-shaped six and seven versions in flame natural matte, also one series, but instead of roasted maple, we've got an ebony fingerboard and a five-piece maple jatoba neck. Gold hardware, like on the classy Solar single cut we saw a few months ago, and Floyd Roses as well. You already know which ones, it's the Korean made 1000 series. Good call, price to performance is probably the best floating trim out there right now for import models out of Indonesia. And like, I'm not too into the whole Floyd thing. Side note, yes, I see a lot of you been asking about the Schecter Banshee GT review. That has a Floyd special, I started playing around with it, one of the strings broke, the entire thing went out of tune, and I, I just can't be to fix it. So yeah, that's what's going on with that, but anyways, I really like how the gold works on this. It's a pointy metal guitar. 
And at the same time, you have to admit, it's pretty classy. With the natural light color, it doesn't look gaudy as gold hardware so often does on darker colors. Most importantly though, there's a new bright neon pink solar. It's an A2.6, so part of the more affordable line. It's got a Floyd, but like the hardtail version is sold out, so good news, there's at least one pink one in stock. But yeah, I'm still working on a video revisiting my own solar single cut which, I mean, it's just a sick guitar. It has been a while since I've demoed a new solo guitar, and there's been a ton of requests for juicy new solo content. So my question to you is, which one? There are so many solo guitars at the moment, and they seemingly multiply all the time. It's a super exciting company to follow. The Boltons, of course, look super cool. So those, or do you wanna see something else? YouTube's gotten rid of the polls in the top right, which is super sad. Uh, so let me know in the comments, I'll hit him up and um, let's try to make something happen. And before we get into the next question, I want to give a huge shout out to Michael D8393 and the rest of the amazing supporters over on Patreon who have made this and all the other content possible. I can't say it enough, I really appreciate the support, especially in 2020, the year of absolute insanity. Really, really appreciate you guys sticking around. If you wanna directly support the channel as well and get bonus perks like MP3s and tabs to all the demo tracks, a link to join the Patreon community is in the description. And now, into the next question. I wish someone was dumb enough to make a Hello Kitty high-end parts warm with custom, lol. Yeah, me too. If only someone was dumb enough to do that, I'll hit them up. In the meantime, my high integrity AliExpress Hello Kitty 7 string project mod vlog is up. Finally, that was equally dumb, although for different reasons. Let's just say the original base wasn't quite as expensive as a Warmoth build. And being an AliExpress guitar, it definitely had its own set of unique challenges. But yeah, uh, definitely pretty dumb, but a lot of fun. Check it out, link in the cards. What is that thing on the headstock? By the way, now I really want your Hello Kitty 7 string lol. Say it with me, class. Jimmy Clips. <laughs> Thanks, man. I take pride in having some of the dumbest guitars on YouTube. These are for that Bonamassa Black Beauty, right? I, I gotta say, shout out to you guys. This was actually pretty awesome. So Bare Knuckle posted this picture to their Facebook and Instagram. They wanted to show off this new pickup set with custom covers that they'd made. And they did not expect you guys to immediately book your seats on that hype train. They didn't even tag me in the picture and they were amazed that so many of you recognize the logo. They're like, wait, your community is kind of awesome. And I'm like, yeah, this community is awesome. Major shout out to you guys. So what we have here is a Ragnarok set with aged nickel covers and then a Holy Diver with a black Battle One cover. The Ragnaroks, obviously Misha Mansour's second signature set, excellent as far as the chug factor is concerned. And the Holy Diver is more of a rock pickup. And as far as them being for the Bonamassa Black Beauty, uh, not exactly. Actually, 100% not at all. I'm not gonna give anything away yet. Bare Knuckle kind of jumped the gun on this one. Uh, the projects are probably gonna take a while, if I'm honest. And yes, projects. These are for two separate builds. One of them, you might be able to guess because it's pretty on brand for the rest of the series. The other, I'd be very, very, very impressed if anybody manages to guess it. Um, but you're more than welcome to try. But yeah, Bare Knuckle make amazing stuff. I've had the Aftermaths on the channel a couple times before. They were amazing when it came to picking out stuff from the lineup and customizing them for these projects. Super excited to finally be able to do something with them. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy what's happening uh, soon-ish. When you get a $1,600 guitar for free, Hell yeah, you're gonna love it. Now this video is on the Schecter Banshee Mach 7 Evertune video, and I don't know for sure the implied meaning of this comment, uh, right? Like it's hard to tell if it's positive or negative over text. I'll admit I have a bad habit of assuming negative, uh, the toxic internet being what it is, but it could be like, oh, it's a $1,600 guitar you got for free. That's awesome. Who wouldn't love that? But I've seen a lot of these comments recently that aren't nearly as ambiguous. Like, uh, you're only saying nice things about this guitar because you got it for free. And I kind of wanted to bring up this conversation because it frustrates me. And it's kind of why I haven't been as active in the comments recently. They just come up so often and it puts me in a bad mood. With everything else going on in the world, it's kind of the last thing that I want to deal with. But there are a lot of upvotes on this comment, so I thought I may as well address it. Anyways, I'd be lying if I said free gear wasn't nice. Well, free. Uh, I still have to do the work. And I'm not trying to sound like a dick or anything, but it just doesn't have the same appeal as it did before. And I think it's because I've realized as I've collected more and more gear, uh, I basically just keep gravitating back to my roots. If everything burned down tomorrow, 
I'd be perfectly happy with just a, a Mesa Dual Rec and a Les Paul. Just, you know what I mean, minimal gear. And gear that's sent by a brand is a transaction with the presumption that it's gonna get coverage, even if I end up loving it, which is what happened with the Schecter, much to my surprise, it is Schecter. It just doesn't have the same emotional connection as a piece of gear that I've researched for months. Stocked listings on Reverb, looked for price drops on Sweetwater, and finally pulled the trigger on with my own money. Or, you know, one that's been gifted by friends or family. That emotional connection just doesn't happen with the business transaction. And I think most people understand that. I get where people are coming from when they're saying, well, the company didn't send this to me. I bought it with my own money, so it's a totally honest review. Yes, you don't have that product because a brand sent it to you to potentially make content. Uh, like that video is not associated with that brand. But it makes me a little skeptical because then that emotional connection is there and possibly purchase justification bias. And I'm not saying that's true across the board, I'm just saying those can be factors. And I definitely appreciate the opportunities to work with all these brands I never dreamed that I'd be working with today. And unboxing new stuff is always exciting, playing with all these incredible guitars on camera is amazing, and it can be stressful and time consuming, but when it comes down to it, this is a great job. But these opportunities are only there because of you guys. And to that end, I would much rather be a trusted resource for gear for you guys to come to for honest opinions rather than be exploited as an avenue for inexpensive marketing who only gives positive reviews to keep big companies happy. Like, why would anyone wanna do that? Or are they only accusing me of doing that because that's what they would do? I don't know, it's weird and it kind of bothers me. Especially in videos where I'm like, yeah, I really like the guitar, Schechter f***ed up the setup though, and they need to do better. I don't know, sometimes it feels like you can't be honest about things you like. You can only be honest if you're making an effort to shit on things and throw more negativity out in the world, which is sad because there's a lot of awesome shit out there and awesome is what I try to cover on this channel. Or am I being too cynical? I don't know, let me know what you think. I think it's time to end this episode of Ask Shit That Rant right there. Actually, no, speaking of awesome this week, I've been listening to Lamb of God's new album, Lamb of God. Lamb of God is like one of my favorite bands ever, and I love the shit out of this new record. It's kind of interesting. It's like Wrath Part 4, in that it's unmistakably Lamb of God. You've got the riffs, you've got the ridiculous vocals. If you hadn't told me that there was a new drummer, I would have assumed it's Chris Adler. But what I found with this album is that each song is also very different. It's like they've perfected the core Lamb of God sound and then each song is like its own unique offshoot of kick-assness. Does that make sense at all? I, I don't know, I've started growing bonsais and all my metaphors are now plant-based, apparently. But yeah, give it a listen. Bloodshot Eyes is probably my favorite track music-wise on the entire album. I'll leave a link in the description. Highly, highly, highly recommend. But now, of course, it is time to hear from yet another adoring fan. It's the high praise of the week. All right, I apologize in advance. Capitalization is all over the place on this one, as are the spaces, but Trey Xavier from Gear Gods says an SG stands for guitar, and he is right. I've owned Gibson SG standards, and they do suck, so I guess that makes you a fucking idiot, right? So, kind of a twist ending for this week's high praise. We're ending on a positive? Trey Xavier from Gear Gods is finally getting the respect he deserves. Congratulations, Trey. Happy for you, bud. And that'll do it for this week's episode of Ask a Fish. I'm sorry for the long rant this time, but if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and hit the like button. I'd love to know your thoughts on anything discussed in the comments. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It's the big red button down there and it actually massively helps me out. You can also hit bell for notifications. That way YouTube sometimes lets you know when I upload a new video. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.